Well, welcome to the Young Lawyer Podcast. It's exciting to have you on, my first international uh, interview. Uh, if we can just delve into how you started your legal journey. Yeah, so thank you so much for having me. Um, First off, I guess I'll introduce myself. So my name is Elizabeth Mountford and I'm based in Toronto, Canada. And I started my legal journey, I guess, kind of off of a bet. So I actually went to law school, not, well, not off of a bet, more of my ego. So I went to law school, not because it was something that I had always dreamed of. I actually decided to go because, um, a friend who I had always been quite competitive with growing up. We were always seeing, you know, who could outdo the other, who was smarter. And when we were finishing up our undergrads, he asked me what I was doing the following year and I didn't have a plan. So I asked him what he was doing and he was going to law school. So I actually said, well, I guess I'm applying to law school too and ended up getting in. And that's, that's kind of where that journey started. It ended up being, you know, where I really came into my own, met so many great people. I was really passionate and interested about pursuing a career in family law. So it ended up being a great opportunity and decision for me. It just wasn't something that was always on my, on my radar. Yeah, I think that's the same for um, a lot of people because I know certainly straight out of, I guess, high school, I was, I had no interest in law and it was kind of just fell into the job and then fell into the study and kind of just flowed from there. Yeah, so I actually, so once I got to law school, I like, I loved it. Um, I was really interested in becoming a family lawyer, working in family law. And so that was my, that was my goal the whole way along. Along the way, I got a little sidetracked and um, tried to go the corporate route. When that didn't work out, I ultimately ended in family law. And very quickly came to realize that that wasn't for me. So I actually ended up leaving family law within eight months of being called to the bar. And I decided to take a step back, reevaluate, and actually went on a whole mindset, self-discovery, wellness journey. And now I am a mindset coach. And what I do is I help young lawyers avoid burnout by creating space for them to feel more calm, grounded, and free to get clear on their goals and show up more fully and confidently in their their legal or non-legal careers. Yeah, that's so exciting, changing it up from going from lawyer to, you know, helping lawyers. How did you, I guess, make that transition from going, oh, all right, I'm a lawyer, all right, and then going to, all right, I'm going to help lawyers, I'm going to take that step back, and I'm going to assist with the mental health sort of side of it? So for me, I think it was because when I was, when I was practicing for those eight, well, so in Canada, I'm not sure how it works in Australia. In Canada, we, um, in order to become a lawyer, you have to do your undergrad, then you have to go to law school, which is another three to three and a half years. Then you spend 10 months articling. So that's kind of like, um, I, maybe like an internship in other, in other countries. Um, and then you also have to write the bar exams. And once you do all of that, then you're called to the bar. So I had articled, I was working as a lawyer and I just felt so overwhelmed, like the pressure of being client facing and trying to help people on what was one of their worst days in their personal lives. And um, the deadlines, the steep learning curve of trying to figure out how to do everything felt so overwhelming. And I didn't have the tools to cope with the stress. And I also didn't have the emotional support from within myself. So when I say that, I mean, I didn't have the self-confidence or the self-worth. And I also felt like I had no one to speak to about it because as lawyers, we're, we're in this field where it's very results and goal driven. It's the constant push to do more, achieve more, be better. And sometimes in that, the emotional side or the dealing with our mindset kind of gets lost. 
And so for me, I, at the time I didn't have the tools to cope with that. So I just needed out. Like I needed a moment to step back, to pause, to breathe and to figure out what my next step would be. So I just took the leap to, well, I say took the leap, but really when I was going through the, the decision, it was like, this isn't working for me right now. Um, I'm going to do something different. And if that doesn't work out, what is the worst case scenario? I can always come back. Like I've always been someone who has been able to network and find a position, find my way. So it was really just working through my fear to take that next step. So that's what I did. I, I kind of took a position that allowed me to have more of the elusive work-life balance. So I was working at set hours and that really gave me the space outside of work to pursue my passions and go on what I would refer to as a self-discovery journey. And when I say that, I mean, really sit with myself and ask myself, what it was that I was truly passionate about, what I enjoyed doing, what I was good at, what I felt like the world needed more of, and how I could do all of that while making money. So that whole process and the transition for me of going from someone who felt like, you know, almost as if I was a fraud as a lawyer, I think sometimes when we're going through that initial learning curve, it's really easy to, you know, we all make mistakes. And because we're used to being, because we're used to being told that we're smart, we're used to achieving, when we start making mistakes or we're in a room with people who are potentially smarter than us, it can make us feel unworthy, like we're not enough, like we're not good enough. Like, yeah, especially if we know, don't have all I? the answers. Yeah, like I should have all the answers. Who am I to be here? And so I was really in that stuck in that way of thinking. And so for me, I started working with some coaches, started using the techniques that I use, so like NLP and hypnosis positive affirmations. And that really shifted how I speak to myself, how I think about myself and what I believe to be true for me. So going through that transformation of being someone who spoke very negatively to themselves, just in terms of I would make a mistake, like I would make a mistake, like send a wrong email and it would be like, oh my gosh, how could you do that? You're so stupid. You're not cut out to be a lawyer. And, and so to go from that shift to being someone who now speaks to myself with much more compassion and really believes that I am capable and worthy of doing anything that I desire with my life. That was a huge shift. And so going through that myself, I want to help other young lawyers make that yeah. transition as well. Yeah, that's such an interesting transition. And um, you know, I don't know really what the word is. Uh, like, I'm so glad you're able to find that within yourself and now looking to help other people because, you know, going through uni, uh, I'm not sure about in Canada, but in uni, um, we do, you know, use four to five years and then you just do a six month course after that, really. So we don't have an extensive period of time as you guys do. But, you know, they really only touch on mental health within probably like about one day. Like, we have this intro course where we go down for the week and it's probably one day, maybe like an hour out of that one day that they actually touch on mental health. But other than that, you don't hear from it. Um, with the Queensland Law Society, they do have like obviously um, phone calls and you know, people there to talk to. But I feel a lot of lawyers, especially young ones in particular, I'd say are probably a bit afraid to reach out. Um, obviously, they've got this weight on their shoulders. You know, I've got something to prove. I've got to prove myself to you know my employer and everyone else that goes, oh, I'm a lawyer now. And I feel like they're probably yeah, burn themselves out very quickly because, you know, you go from working, you know, you stand at eight, nine hours of working, 12 to whatever. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I think that, you know, mental health, although we're talking about it more, I still do believe that there's stigma attached to it. And the other thing too, is that it can feel really isolating when you're working such long hours and you're you're stuck in fight or flight, you're stuck in survival mode. And so for me, what I found is even though I had a lot of friends who were also going through the process um, alongside me, I wasn't actually connecting with them and able to, we weren't actually, 
I mean, like I didn't have the emotional capacity to kind of support someone through their journey as I was trying to survive, but I also didn't have the ability to, to communicate with them because we were both so focused on our work and making sure that we were, again, proving ourselves um, as we started off in our journeys. And I think that this is why mindfulness is so important. And I know that mindfulness, wellness, they've all become these buzzwords. There's a reason for it. Like there is a reason for people are really trying to get others into the mindfulness wellness space. And it's because there are really simple, easy to use tools that we can all implement to help us calm ourselves, feel more grounded, have more focus, see more clearly as we navigate our careers. Yeah, that's so true. And it definitely needs to spread more to the point where, you know, it's, you can go into work and just have a chat to the person next to you and be able to go, all right, you should probably speak to someone. But yeah, at the end of the day, there is still a stigma. And I think it comes with the, I guess, confidentiality as well as a lawyer. You know, you can't really talk to your family. You can't talk to your friends about, you know, what you're actually dealing with um, because no one really understands what you personally are going through compared to other people. Um, In saying that, I guess, what advice would you have um, for younger lawyers to avoid burning out? I would say that all young lawyers need to prioritize themselves and their self-care and learn how to set boundaries so that you can take time for yourself. And it can be as simple as creating a morning routine where, and by morning routine, it doesn't have to be a big thing, but just take five to 10 minutes in the morning, five to 10 minutes at night where you can sit down If you're not into meditation, there are other techniques that you can use. Journaling is something that's really great to get like all of your thoughts and frustrations out onto paper. You can use a technique called emotional freedom techniques. I talk a lot about this and I actually have a free guide that teaches you how to do it. And what it does is it's actually, it's similar to the idea of acupuncture. It combines Eastern and Western healing modalities. And you literally just tap on different energy points or meridian points on your body. So like on the top of your head, above your eyebrows, and there are a couple of different points. And what that does is it moves energy through your body. So any stuck energy or emotion is able to be released. So you can release unwanted emotions like stress and overwhelm. And then you can go through and you can tap on those points using positive affirmations so that you can elevate your emotional state. So what I mean by that is you can shift your emotional state from feeling stressed and overwhelmed into feeling calm, happy, like inner peace and joy simply by tapping on different points on your body. So this is a really powerful tool that all young lawyers can use in a matter of like five minutes to help themselves like calm down, see more clearly and continue throughout their day. So I would really suggest taking five to 10 minutes in the morning, five to 10 minutes at night before you go to bed, just to have a moment of quiet, of stillness, to take some time to breathe and clear your mind so that you can continue to do your best and show up as your most confident self in your career. Yeah, that's such great advice and definitely taking time out, especially as a young lawyer. Well, as when any lawyer really, as you, even as you progress, it's really important to take that time. Um, well, that's really all the questions I had. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a blast and it's yeah, definitely exciting hearing different stories that um, of people that are no longer in law and then found their passions outside, but still connected to it. Thank you so much for having me. I will just add that for anyone who is interested in connecting with me, they connect can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm on there as Elizabeth Mountford or on Instagram. My handle is at Elizabeth Mountford.